Hey collectors, Anthony from Hashesnut, and here today we have Transformers War for Cybertron Kingdom Blaster and Eject. Now, as you see on the front of the box here, it's uh, a cassette mode, is his alt, and I kind of wanted a Cybertronian mode. I have the original Blaster, so it would have been nice to get something a little different. Uh, back in the video game days, like 10 years ago, uh, Blaster had like a, uh, a van mode, you know, with, with a tape deck on front for some reason. Uh, but, I mean, even Siege Soundwave had a spaceship mode. Uh, so I don't know why they just skipped right to a classical tape deck mode. Uh, now, while he does come with Eject, I'm really hoping that they will release a four-pack like they did for Soundwave. Because that would be fantastic to have all of his main tapes. Other people question Sondor. I, I don't know how recent Sondor is. Because obviously you know Rewind Jack, Steel John Ramhorn. But uh, in the, the War for Cybertron video games, uh, the as I said, the Vigor in the van, he came out with discs. Uh, and Sundor was one of them. That way he had a bird disc, you know. Somebody had to fight uh, Ravage. Uh, anyway, uh, when we get back, we're going to check this guy out. So here we are. We have, of course, uh, Blaster in his uh, bot mode. And uh, in his bot mode as well is Eject. Now, to the left of Blaster, as far as your screen is concerned, technically his right, uh, there is the core class sound wave from Kingdom. And then on your right, or um, the left of Eject, is the Siege sound wave. Now, you can kind of see that uh, there, there's similarities between the two, obviously. And historically, I guess there's always kind of been. But they were based originally on two different molds from two different toy lines. Now, real quick, just a comparison. Here is Blaster next to his G1. So you notice a, a great size difference, but I, I guess the purpose was to be a mini cassette player in the 80s, and so to be accurate size, so it, it, could, it could be like, you could trick somebody, you know? Uh, that's the whole gimmick there. Okay, so before we get into anything else, let's put these guys aside and take a look at the box. Now the box is the typical Voyager size box. Uh, of course it has an image of the, the figure's alt mode, the figure itself. And then we flip it around, we get the, the back with the details on the figure, and its transformation, the fact that Eject comes out of his chest. And uh, so far so good. Uh, nothing different else about the box. Uh, being supposedly one of the last figures in Kingdom, or War for Cybertron in general, um, you would expect they, like they did with a couple of them, just kind of skip out on the uh, little collectible cards, but they did not do that this time. Uh, inside the box, of course, is the instructions, the don't hurt yourself paper, and uh, a card, which I don't even think Pipes or Slammer even got a card, but this guy gets a card. So taking a closer look at him, we just roll him around here. He doesn't have a lot of kibble, which is actually none. I don't, there's no kibble. It's fantastic. Um, <laughs> his butt panel is this faux uh, you know, panel for his transformation. Anyway, uh, he looks fantastic. Uh, the thing that bothers me is these panels down here, but they flip for transformation. But they feel loose otherwise, which, again, is just all me. And if we bring out Soundwave, we can see the size difference, which is historically accurate. Again, they were different boom boxes. Uh, for their error from two different toy lines. So, obviously, also, this sound wave is the one that had the Siege um, spaceship mode. And uh, so he's obviously meant for a different type of transformation. I did not get the Netflix version with the, with the tape deck transformation because I really didn't want that. Because scale-wise, it makes no sense. But, uh, whatever. So, this is core class. Uh, this is what they call a battle master, I guess. And so Eject is obviously about half the size of the core class uh, sound wave, which is it's fine. It, but um, I wanted to show one thing real quick, because I'm not doing a review on sound wave here, but he came with a tape and it's ravaged. He does not transform. Um, but I, I just thought that was interesting, the detail in here. 
But speaking of tapes, let's transform Eject here so I can show you how he fits into these two behind him. And he, he is a fairly easy transformation, just do a lot of folding. And um, the one thing that bothers me is his head. It, uh, you gotta twist it around. And I'm trying to figure out the best part. Okay, so twist around the top here. Uh, but once it gets in there, you gotta use your fingernails or something to get it out. It is in there. There's no nothing to grab onto. So that kind of bothers me. So the other thing is you twist these uh, 90 degrees and uh, start folding them up. Now I believe the arms fold in. I'm trying to remember the exact way because obviously it has to come out to become a tape. And uh, kind of make sure you got to fold in all the joints correctly. There. Fold them the other 90 degrees. There you go. Oh, that actually looks pretty cool, don't it? I mean that that meh. but I mean that that is awesome. So let's uh, so for ejecting that uh, blaster, you gotta pop his chest here by pushing these bottom buttons. Because on uh, Soundwave, it's just this top one. So which means there's a bit more more mechanical. You still got that little tab in here. I don't know if you can see it, uh, which is actually what controls the eject feature, which is just just pretty much similar to how it works here in Soundwave. Uh, so you throw him in. There is actually a little small guide in here, so if you don't get it in right, it's not going to fit. And he goes in with very little clearance, and he just fits in there perfectly. He looks cool. And then, of course, you hit the eject button to get him out. Uh, you can put him into Soundwave, and then, in this case, also Sound Blaster, and also uh, Double Dealer. And he does fit. He goes in here. Now, he might be a little bigger than the normal cassettes, because he does this when I try to pop him out. It's not a big thing, but oh, see, it's starting to work. But on occasion it happens and it's fine. So uh, we'll put eject aside here and let's uh, transform blaster. So his gun doesn't do anything special, it's just, it, it's just the gun. Um, and you'll notice similarities in the transformation between sound wave and blaster, um, primarily because there's, there's not a lot of different and uh, trying to get the things to so start straightening these things out. And uh, there's this piece in the back. So again, very similar to Soundwave. I'm gonna probably point these out as I go along. There we go. Tight joints, there we go, closed it up. And uh, I was like, hmm, how many times do I do this? Like this, and like this. And then we will swivel the waist around. I just realized you got like a little jetpack or battery thing back here. It's interesting. Anyway, because as you notice, we put the faux front on. That's what we've done. Because you can kind of see where we're going now. Uh, flip up the feet. It's kind of like the classic version. And uh, turn the legs. You see where we're going, right? Trying to get the arms to flip. There we go. It might be easier for me to there we go. Come on. You can do it. Everything is super tight on here. It's a brand new figure, obviously. Okay. Okay, here we go. Supposedly, like this. And then pull these up, open up these, pull these out, oh boy oh boy, we're hiding a lot of stuff aren't we? Oof. 
I'd rather have a tight figure than a loose figure, frankly. So slowly go upwards, filling in the space here. Because there's obviously clips that are on the inside of these pieces here. The clip on in there. There's nothing in the way. Oh, you know what? Before I do that, I need to remember to flip these things. There we go. So you look like that. Anyway, back to this. Come on. It. Don't try to force anything. And I know I'm not talking a lot while I'm doing this, but this is super tight. Oh. Oh, there we go. And then this locks it in place. And then you pull up these bits. And Popped off. There we go. Voila! And uh, it's like, where do you put the gun? I don't know, but I'm gonna stick it right there, just out of the way. This is a really cramped transformation, but I mean, it gets the job done. We'll eject this, put eject in. Boy, that is confusing. Eject to put eject in. So here is Blaster, 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 Soundwave, Soundwave, <laughs> and Ejects inside of uh, Kingdom Blaster. You can see the differences in alt modes, the changes between the classic and the new one. Um, it's like there's, I'm trying to remember which one ejects the front end on here. It's like, do any of them? Which one of them do? Let's see, uh, there we go. The eject button ejects. There we go. Makes perfect sense. Uh, so, the old guy here uses a bigger set of cassette minions. And then, of course, this is the spaceship mode for uh, Soundwave, for his Siege character. Uh, Sound Blaster also forms into this mode. Then, of course, here is the mini cassette mode for Core Class um, Kingdom Soundwave. So, yeah, that's uh, it's actually nicely compact and easy. And then, or for Cybertron, Blaster. So on the back of Blaster here, you just you know, put his gun. He doesn't have a lot of kibble or anything. Rather straightforward, although I keep having mine pop, which is weird. And we just lock these all back in together, but uh, it looks, it's pretty cool. So that was Transformers War for Cybertron Kingdom Blaster. Now, as I was transforming him, I realized that the wrists are starting to get loosened, which may or may not be a good thing. Obviously, they're needed to bend backwards. And in the case of one with the pointy finger, to bend forward a little bit so he can press his own little eject button. And so uh, hopefully he doesn't get worse than that. Also, other, other things while transforming him, um, he's still super tight. Uh, it's hard to keep them together without making sure that skirt is, is both pegs are into the skirt when you put the legs up, uh, cause that double ensures that it stays connected. Uh, even if the clips on the front on the sides of the cassette player tape deck bit of itself, uh, may not even hold. So that's good to have. Otherwise, I mean, he looks fantastic. You can see that they said, okay, well, we're going to take this from Soundwave. And then we we're going to maybe change scale a little bit. Uh, if I had the Netflix Soundwave and then I'd have something to compare with, I don't. Because uh, I, I don't know how close they really are. I can see the similarities with the Siege Soundwave. But uh, I, I can't really compare on that uh, apples to apples scale. But otherwise, tell me what you think in the comments about Blaster and Eject here. Are you looking forward to the other cassettes being released? 
uh, Ramhorn, Steeljaw, Rewind, and Sundor, because I am. I'm hoping for a four-pack uh, Generation Selects like they did with the uh, four tapes for Soundwave uh, and uh, Double Dealer or Sound Blaster and Double Dealer. I can't remember which two they go to. But uh, thanks for watching, and please remember to like and subscribe.